Hello and welcome on our STM32 Cube IDE Basics training session. In this section we will create a DC example using DMA transfers of the conversion results. A DC will be triggered by the timer events. For all of those uh, actions we will use HAL library. We will start with uh, launching STM32 Cube IDE. We can use uh, existing uh, workspace or we can create a new one. And we will create a new project for STM32G071 microcontroller. I will create a new project uh, within existing workspace. So I go to File, New, STM32 project. To we'll start with the target selection. So our, our microcontroller is uh, STM32G071RB LQFP64 package, which is uh, present on a Nucleo board. Our project name uh, could be, for example, G0ADCDMA. And I would use uh, C language, executable binary file, and the project type STM32 cube. I would keep uh, the rest uh, as a default settings. Let's wait a minute uh, till the device configuration would be started. Okay, we've got the device configuration window. Uh, in front of us there is our microcontroller and uh, it's, uh, it's pin out. Uh, so let's start uh, uh, from selecting the debug interface. So I go to system core, assess and uh, seri serial wire. I can see PA13 and 14 selected as a debug interfaces. Then uh, let's select the analog uh, channel. So I go to analog section, ADC1. I scroll down to select the inter internal temperature sensor. We cannot see any change on the pinout because it's internal. And I need to put some configuration for the ADC. So let's go to the parameter settings uh, first, and uh, let's select uh, let's select uh, some basic uh, settings. Uh, we will keep uh, the clock prescaler to synchronous clock uh, mode divided by two. It means that um, our uh, ADC would be clocked by the system clock. Uh, divided by 2. Our system clock uh, is uh, HSI 16 MHz, which we can verify in a clock configuration. So this is this this is our system clock, 16 MHz, and ADC clock modes, uh, it is this one. This, uh, this selector, it is used for the ADC clock. Uh, at the moment we can see that it's clocked by the system clock, and additionally we are dividing this clock by uh, 2. It means that ADC would be clocked by 8 MHz, which is important to select the proper uh, sampling time uh, parameters. Let's go further. We need to set uh, the sampling time for selected channel. We've got two sampling times, in fact. Uh, we can select two uh, different uh, sampling times for two different uh, groups of channels which would be, would be sampled. In our case there would be only one channel which would use, uh, for example, sampling, sampling time uh, common one. By default uh, there is a smallest possible value there, it's 1.5 uh, clock cycles, uh, which is uh, far too fast um, for our temperature sensor. But uh, to have the exact value, we need to uh, go to uh, the documentation of our uh, microcontroller. How to reach uh, documentation to our mi microcontroller? In the meantime, I have opened uh, datasheet uh, for our STM32G071 uh, microcontroller. Let's try uh, to find uh, the proper value of the sampling time of our temperature sensor. For this purpose, uh, we'll have a look at into the electrical characteristics and operating conditions. From within this list uh, there should be one chapter concerning temperature sensors characteristics like, like here. Within this chapter we can see some basic characteristics of our temperature sensor. On the next page we can find uh, the sampling time 
uh, for this temperature sensor, which is set as a minimum 5 microseconds, which is the 5 microseconds. Having this uh, 5 uh, microseconds as a minimum sampling time requested for internal temperature sensor, and uh, knowing that uh, our ADC would be clocked by 8 MHz, we can calculate easily that uh, we need at least 40 clock cycles of uh, this 8 MHz clock uh, to properly sample our ADC channel temperature sensor. Let's uh, have a look uh, which value would be the most uh, proper one. We do not have uh, 40 clock cycles. We've got 39.5, which is below this minimum value. This is why we will select the next one, so 79.5 clock uh, cycles as a sampling time. We are leaving the uh, the sampling time common to uh, not touched, as we will not use it. We will have uh, only one conversion, which is the temperature sensor, and uh, we need to specify as well the trigger conversion source. By default, it is software. Uh, we will change it uh, to uh, timer two, trigger out, and uh, we we'll select one of the edges. We can keep it like uh, like this. Let's scroll down the rank 1, which is the information about our channel. So we can see uh, it is uh, one channel, it is its name, it's a temperature sensor, and its sampling time is 79.5 clock cycles, which is the value we would like to, uh, to have. We keep uh, the rest of the parameters not touched, because we will not uh, use them. The next point uh, would be to uh, configure the DMA, which would be used to transfer the data from ADC to internal buffer within SRAM. So let's go to the DMA settings. There is nothing at the moment, so we click Add. Select the channel. There is only one DMA request, ADC1. We have uh, more than one channel available, because please remember that stm 32 g 0 contains DMA MOOC, so which allows us to select uh, different uh, DMA uh, channels for different peripherals. We've got uh, a lot of possibilities here. Let's select the default uh, configuration. Uh, the direction would be from peripheral to memory, because we will take the data from ADC and transfer them into the buffer within the SRAM. There would be only one DMA transfer, so let's keep the priority on the low level. Um, we will use only a single uh, set of the conversions, uh, so let's keep a mode uh, normal. It means that uh, after the last conversion, mm, the DMA transfer would be stopped, uh, and uh, we will stop on the last uh, on the last uh, component within the buffer. A data width, uh, let's uh, keep uh, as a half word, because we will transfer 12-bit data and uh, we would increment uh, the address on memory side. The rest of the parameters we will keep uh, not touched. So that's it uh, for ADC configuration. Next step would be the configuration of the timer, which would trigger our ADC uh, conversions. So let's go to the timers, timer 2, and uh, let's select uh, the clock source for this timer as an internal clock. We will not use uh, any, any channels, uh, because uh, uh, we will use only time base, so the overflows of the timer to trigger uh, the ADC and these ADC conversions. So let's uh, switch to the, to the configuration. And um, we need uh, to set uh, somehow the configuration of the timer to uh, trigger our ADC with the frequency of 1 Hz. How to configure our timer to work uh, with the frequency of 1 Hz on the output and trigger our ADC with this frequency? Let's have a look on the clock configuration once again. We see that uh, our system clock is uh, configured in on 16 MHz, which is uh, transferred uh, to all of the peripherals. As we can see, our timer clock is as well 16 MHz. So we need uh, to divide somehow this 16 MHz in such a way to have 1 Hz at the end. Let's come back to the pinout configuration. And um, we've, got, uh, uh, we've got here a few possibilities. I would propose uh, the following uh, technique. Let's use a prescaler, which is 16-bit value, to 
rectify the clock as a first step. So I would propose uh, to divide it by 16,000. It is important to put here the value, uh, which is the desired value, minus 1, due to the fact that in the final calculation there is one edit to the value stored in this PSC part of the register. After this operation, we will have as input clock to the timer, to its counter, 1 kHz. So we need to divide this uh, 1 kHz somehow to have 1 Hz. To do this, uh, we are using a discounted period, which will be set to 1000. Uh, I put uh, the value 999 due to the fact that we are calculating from zero. So after this, uh, those two operations, uh, our timer would uh, overflow uh, with the frequency of 1 Hz, which is the desired, uh, desired uh, uh, value. This is the first part of the configuration of the timer. So we will have a timer which would overflow in the frequency of 1 Hz. Second step is to configure the trigger output, TRGO uh, pin uh, parameters. So the next point is to select properly the trigger output parameters. So first uh, we need to enable this master slave mode uh, to enable uh, triggering uh, another peripherals like ADC by this timer and then select the uh, source of this uh, trigger output signal. Uh, so we will change this reset which is default value to update event and on each overflow of the timer we will have a trigger pulse to uh, start a new conversion by uh, ADC. That's all operations uh, within the device configuration. We can generate the code. So I can simply save the project, so Control S. Yes. After a while, a project is generated. So we can go to our main.c file, which is the main file of our, our code. Okay, so we can see it is uh, initially pre-configured. All of the peripherals we just configured within the device configuration are initialized. What is missing is a calibration of ADC, then its start and the final configuration of its connection to DMA, and then as a final step, start of a timer tool, which would uh, trigger the ADC conversions. So let's uh, do it step by step. Let's start uh, from definition of the buffer we will use to store the ADC uh, data. So the first uh, thing would be the definition of its maximum size. So I would call it as ADC buff size and I would set it to 8. Uh, please have a look that I'm putting the code within the user code sections just to be sure that uh, after the code regeneration uh, from the device configuration my uh, code would be not uh, deleted. Uh, so the next step would be the, the buffer itself. The buffer will be used to store the 12-bit data. Uh, so we, we will use a 16-bit um, size of its uh, basic component. And then let's name it ADC buffer and its uh, size will set to this uh, define, which we have defined a bit before. Okay, so this is the first step definition of the data where we will store the uh, temperature values. Okay, so next step uh, would be to calibrate uh, IDC. Uh, calibration is needed to remove the offset error and it should be run on each uh, power on of the application. So just after the uh, reset in our case. Uh, for this we've got a dedicated function within, within the HAL. So if I would uh, use uh, HAL ADC EX. EX means uh, extended. It is special marking uh, for the functions within the HAL, which uh, means that uh, this particular function may differ from other similar functions uh, on different uh, different STM32 lines. If you do not see an EX uh, as a suffix in the function name, it means that this function can be copy-paste across the families without any change. 
In case of ADCs, uh, these calibration functions may differ from family to family. This is why we got this EX as suffix at the end. Okay, so we, we need to select the proper function, calibration start. Then uh, the first argument, the only argument is uh, ADC1 handler. And that's it. To be sure that this calibration has been done properly, I would check it. So I would check whether this function has been executed correctly. If it's executed correctly, it should return the value HAL OK. So I would use simple if and then if... Uh, OK, so if it's not equal, it should... execute the error handler function. This error handler function is uh, automatically generated by Cubemix as well. You can find it at the bottom of this uh, of this file. This function is defined uh, as, a, an, as an empty function, so you can put here an action which would be triggered in case of any problems with uh, HAL functions execution. Let's back to our uh, coding. Uh, so our ADC is uh, calibrated. ADC is calibrated, then the next step uh, would be to start uh, ADC. So let's uh, let's have a look for the options we've got. ADC, start, and we've got three options. We've got start, start DMA, start IT. Start uh, is a full polling mode, uh, start IT is with usage of interrupts, and start DMA is with usage with cooperation with DMA. So we are selecting this option and we need uh, to specify three arguments. The first one is a uh, handler to ADC we are using. So this is ADC HADC1. Then uh, there is a pointer to the buffer where the data should be stored and length of this buffer. So the first argument is a pointer. Then there should be the buffer name. So ADC buffer and its length. And again, uh, it would be good to check whether this function is executed correctly as well. This is why I'm adding this part of the code. Okay, and the last operation to start the process is to start the, the timer 2. To start the timer 2, we need to execute uh, the HAL function from a timer module which would start the time base. Time base means that uh, uh, we are using only the counter and its uh, overflows without uh, any action connected to input or output channels. So in our case, uh, we've got again start uh, time base, uh, start, start DMA, start IT. We don't care about the IT or DMA usage for the timer. So we are selecting the first function, the simplest one. The only argument we need to put here is a handler to this timer. So there is only one, timer two. And again, let's be sure that everything is correct with this function execution. This is why I'm adding this uh, checkup. Okay, and we are done. So this is the basic... Uh, piece of the code to start uh, our ADC conversion with usage of DMA and triggering uh, by the timer uh, timer 2. The source of the trigger has been done in a device configuration. In the code uh, we need to first do the calibration of ADC and then specify the buffer and its size and start both uh, peripherals. Okay, so the missing point is to process the interrupt which is related to our DMA transfer complete. The interrupt uh, call, it is managed uh, within the stm32g0xx underscore it.c file, where we will find uh, DMA1 channel 1 IRQ handler. This function is automatically generated by uh, the device configuration by stm32cube IDE. And um, it is calling uh, the function HAL DMA IRQ handler from our device. Uh, the HAL library is built in such a way that if we are using a DMI, 
usually it is assigned to one of the peripherals. Uh, there is a link uh, created between DMI and the peripheral with uh, which uh, DMI is working. So in such a case, uh, instead of uh, calling the callbacks uh, from the peripheral, in our case ADC, can be used instead. So what we need to do, it is defined uh, within the halmsp.c file. If we go uh, to ADC MSP init function, you can see that uh, there is a configuration of DMA channel and uh, there is a macro called called HAL underscore link DMA which is connecting our ADC uh, with a DMA handler and uh, it's connecting in fact uh, the callbacks uh, from ADC which should be used uh, normally by its interrupts to callbacks uh, with callbacks from a DMA. As a result we can reuse uh, the, for example, ADC conversion complete callback from ADC as a final result of DMA transfer complete. Uh, knowing this, uh, we can add uh, the function within our main.c file. User code uh, uh, for a section is very good uh, for this. And we are adding the new uh, code. So, HAL uh, ADC conversion complete callback And uh, within this callback, uh, we can either stop ADC in DMA mode or timer 2 to not trigger uh, ADC uh, anymore. So I will stop, uh, I will stop uh, ADC. So I'm selecting the function hal ADC stop. And again, we've got a DMA option. And uh, ampersand and 1. I'm checking whether this function is properly executed. If not, I will call error handler. Okay, so this uh, will give us only the, the option to really stop uh, the ADC operations once the buffer is full. In the next step, uh, we will try to post-process those data. So let's uh, s finish this uh, project at the moment. Uh, let's try to compile it. As the next step, we will connect our board and try to run the debug session. And let's observe what would be the result which we can gain uh, in the IDC buffer. Okay, I have my board uh, connected. The code is compiled. Let's try after connection of the board to run the debug session. So let's go to the debug session. I run it. The application will switch uh, to the debug perspective. Now I can uh, have a look on uh, the buffer. As you can see, now I can s have a look on its uh, value, current value, the base address, the type of it. So at the moment it contains only zeros. Uh, please remember that uh, our conversion will uh, last uh, 8 seconds. We've got a buffer which size is 8 elements and the frequency of the trigger is 1 Hz. It gave us 8 seconds. To be sure that we are just at the end of the conversion, let's put our breakpoint in a callback which would be triggered in case of DMA transfer complete. Okay, so i starting the execution of the code. Let's wait 8 seconds more or less. Okay, execution has uh, is finished at the moment. So now we can have a look on the on the buffer. So we can, for example, highlight it in this in this area. And uh, you see that the values are not the temperature ones, we need to convert it to the temperature. 
right now it's a pure reading uh, from IDC, it's a raw value, it's, it needs to be, uh, to be converted. Uh, for this uh, we need a reference uh, voltage value, which is in our case the power supply of the board, which is 3.3 volts. And uh, we've got a special macro which can be used here to convert this value into the Celsius decrease. So now we will do this process. Okay, so the next uh, step would be to specify the flag which would be used uh, to uh, highlight uh, when there is a time to do the conversion of the data. I would go into user code uh, section for the private variable and I would create one variable which is 8 bit uh, long and I would call it flag with initial value set to uh, 0. Then uh, I would uh, set this flag within our uh, DMA transfer complete, flag set to 1, and uh, based on this uh, value I would uh, trigger the uh, post-processing of ADC data within while one loop. So I would create here the if uh, loop flag, so if a flag is uh, equal to 1 we will do some uh, post-processing uh, and at the end of course we need to clear uh, the flag to not do the same operations all the time. Okay, let's try to find a function which would convert our data, uh, but before this uh, we will specify uh, the index which would be used uh, to convert the data from the buffer one by one. I would use the simplest possible uh, variable, 8 bit, because we've got only 8 uh, bit uh, data. IDX, I would uh, set the default, default value as a 0. And then we would create here the simple uh, for loop. For IDX equal to 0, then IDX less than IDC buff size and IDX plus plus. Okay, so it create a simple uh, for a loop. Let's find the function or macro which would convert our uh, IDC row data into the temperature in Celsius decrease. A lot of such functions are stored uh, with an low layer modules for given peripheral. So let's start uh, from this. Uh, underscore, underscore low layer, which is the common name of the macros, very useful macros to do simple operations. Then the peripheral name like ADC, underscore, and control space. We can see here an um, interesting macro, ADC calc temperature. It looks uh, that it is something we are looking for. As a first argument, it needs uh, reference uh, analog voltage which has been used for the ADC, then the raw data from ADC and resolution we have used during our measurements. Uh, let's have a closer look on this macro. So I would uh, click right uh, button on mouse and uh, open declaration. So the first argument is analog reference voltage in millivolts. So I would define this name within my, my code uh, in a section uh, private defines over here. I have measured this value, it's 3.3 .3 volts, in millivolts it would be 3300. And I would use this as a first argument of our macro. Okay, let's uh, go to the second. Second argument is um, conversion data measured by ADC. So this is our buffer. Our buffer is, this is the name of our buffer, and uh, of course we need a single element, so IDX, and the third argument was the resolution. We have used 12 bits, so I will select the resolution 12 bits, like this, and uh, of course we need to store the value in the buffer again. So. We will just replace the old values, raw values, with the new ones in the Celsius decrease. Okay, let's try to compile the code. And start the debug session. Uh, 
Okay, let's, um, as a first point, let's remove the breakpoint from our uh, callback. I already did it, uh, so we don't need it in this place. We would need instead the callback in our while one loop uh, on the place when the flag would be cleared, which means that uh, it should be triggered once the conversion uh, the, con the conversion to the Celsius decrease is done. Okay, I double click on this line and I run the conversion. So first it would convert eight uh, data uh, from the temperature and sensor, and then uh, it will land in th this part of the code and convert it to the Celsius decrease. Okay, we are we are already there. Uh, so I would just highlight our ADC buffer and please have a look right now, instead of 900 something, we've got a value in the Celsius decrease. Please remember that this value is a temperature uh, of the silicon of the structure uh, within the microcontroller. It is not uh, the ambient temperature, it is the structure temperature. This is why it can be a bit higher than uh, what we feel, what we've got uh, in our environment. Okay, we can terminate uh, the session and that's it for this module. Thank you for watching this video.